Hello there, folks. Welcome to today's Monday Marvel Heroes stream. I am so excited. I'm very happy to be back for you guys and to do some cool stuff. So as you know, with Marvel Heroes, we've got a lot going on. There's a lot of stuff going on, like on the test center and stuff like that. Unfortunately, I don't have an updated test center, so I won't be able to play any of that stuff. But I'm happy to talk about it. I want to talk about it because we've got a lot of really, really cool stuff coming up. And on top of that, I wanted to talk a little bit about stuff going on on the forums as well. Because there's stuff that just annoys me. I mean, really. I mean, really. Really? So, very exciting stuff. Uh, but either way, um, yeah, so we're excited to just go and do some cool stuff. Apparently my cursor has... There we go. All right. It's all tweaking out on me. It's a little bit better. Well, man, this thing is freaking... My mouse cursor is all kinds of freaky right now. I don't know why. It's nobody's fault, except probably Joker Chaz. I'm just going to sit here for a little while, see if uh, people who randomly show up. Actually, ah, shoot. See, I just remembered I was going to play as Ultron instead of uh, Rocket. So I just finished fourth prestige on Rocket, if I'm not mistaken, which is pretty hardcore. I don't know if you guys know, but I'm pretty cool. You know, I am uh, pretty bamf like that, you guys. It's okay, y'all can be jealous. I'm curious if I can if I can get some more copies of his um his uniques and plus I got the trident that I'm working on right now. So we'll just play his Ultron for a little while. Oops, wrong button. There we go. I don't know what... So that's one thing that I'm kind of sad about. I actually... I missed the window, or supposedly I did. It's still on in the game. But the uh, the Advance Pack 3 was here until technically yesterday is when it officially stopped. I don't know if that's actually true. I actually haven't checked on the, uh, on the Marvel Heroes website. I probably should. I should check to see if it's still there. But unfortunately, I just I couldn't get it. I couldn't swing the money, sadly. So it's it's a little bit saddening, and I really wish that I could have. But it's I mean, if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be, right? So it's what we got to do. But like I said, there's a lot of uh, little stuff that I wanted to talk about today too. Don't there's a couple people here. Let's see. Take a look at our fancy viewer list. And don't worry, I know if anybody is watching who I owe stuff to. Hey, look, it's Rev. Hi, Rev. I don't know why, but for some reason, Twitch counts Moobot as somebody watching. It's really weird. Or maybe it counts me. It counts one of us because it says there's two people, but Rev's the only person on the list. I'm just saying. Look at me with Midtown Madness Monday and Odin's Bounty. So cool. Like, super awesome. I should probably get a pet, right? You know, because I don't want to be a filthy casual. So I gotta play like I actually know what I'm doing on occasion. But, suffice it to say, uh, gifting still is not in the game. We're waiting on an actual patch to come, which will possibly be this week. It wouldn't surprise me if it was this week. And after that... I believe they will have gifting re-enabled, so I'll finally be able to get through my giant backlog of gifts that I owe people. It's really weird. I'm just kind of like, oh, what the fudge? Like, seriously, I owe so much. I just, I feel so bad. I feel so bad, you guys. Uh, let's see here. What was I going to do? I was going to do something that seemed important at the time. And now I don't remember what it was. It's because I fail. Wah, wah, wah. Let's see. 
Oh, sure. Now they post the Monday update. God. Okay, that's what I thought. It's most of the stuff on the test center is pretty much identical to what I took a look at uh, two weeks ago now, week ago ish, somewhere around there. Um, so most of it is still identical. Some of it has been changed and updated though. So we've got uh, Kamala Khan, the new team up hero. There, and she's the one I wanted to talk about with the forums and stuff because it really just bugs me, just irks me a little bit. Um, and then we've got the dynamic leveling where the levels of the bad guys are based off of your level rather than the specific area you're in. So instead of having an area that's only for levels 5 to 10, you'll have an area that's for level 5 to 50 or you'll have an area that's for level 50 to 60. You know, whatever it happens to be. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. 10.0. Look, it's Evil Adam. <laughs> hey, Rev. Evil Adam, I promise, I'm actually me. I really am. I literally am. Uh, sure, we'll get Insignia of Quake. I didn't even look at it. I don't care. I don't even care. That's how hardcore I am, you guys. My T... What? I don't know. Evil Adam is trying to say words, but it just doesn't work. Wor words don't work for poor Evil Adam. I don't know what the deal is. Um, so, let me think. The uh, Oh, and then the Avengers Tower redesign. That was the other uh, big thing that was going on, too. Because, I mean, come on, Avengers Tower redesign. So, for those of you who missed it, it actually looks really, really cool. Um, I personally don't see a particular reason for it, simply because I'm fine with the way that the Avengers Tower looks right now. But I know some people have been, like, brr, 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 you know, like, up in arms, especially with the movies and stuff, and how it's like, why does the Avengers Tower look so cute in the movies, but ours looks so lame? And I'm just like... I don't care. Just give me something cute. I think that it looks super cute myself personally. Um, and then the dynamic combat thing is uh, is really nice. I liked it. I was testing it out a while ago. <laughs> Stash. Uh, I was testing it out a good while ago, and I thought that it worked very nicely like the it, the bosses weren't overly difficult which is what the devs were really worried about my thing is that i don't see a huge point to it other than like does this mean now i'm going to be getting legendary quests at level 60 for like crumbling brownstones and stuff like this you know like am i going to have to go back to chapter one for some of my legendary quests i don't really mind it but at the same time it's just kind of odd you know what i mean so that's what I'm weirded out by with the uh, with the leveling thing. So the other major change that we've got coming up is Kamala Khan, also known as the. I mean, is is it new Miss Marvel or is she just Miss Marvel? I don't know. Um, either way, the the newest iteration of Miss Marvel, whatever her exact name is. Um, she is now a team-up hero, or will be a team-up hero soon. And the thing is, there was a there was a post on the forums. I don't remember exactly who started. It doesn't matter. But it was one of these basically complainy forum posts, and that was all that it was. It was just a ton of bile and bitterness. And I I don't know. It's weird because I do love the Marvel Heroes community. It's great. It's an awesome community. But even so, we do stuff like that, and it really frustrates me. And, you know, there, okay, so there's a fine line between giving criticism and just being an outright douche, you know? And, that, and that's the problem. That's, that's what the difference is here with this particular post, where people were saying different things but not providing any... Uh, it was either non-constructive feedback or feedback that made no sense where it's just like oh i don't like her or something and it's like well that has nothing to do with the model 
you know, and stuff like that. And it's really unfortunate because we see it all the time. Pretty much every single hero who gets released has that in some way. And it's just really annoying. Okay, she's Miss Marvel. That's what I thought. Because the, the like, so Rev is saying, the original Miss Marvel is now Captain Marvel. I remember that happened. I do remember that thing occurring, that event occurring. Well, and that was the whole point, is that they switched it. Because even in game now, who was once Miss Marvel is now Captain Marvel. So, and that's why I, I think that uh, Kamala Khan is coming as a playable hero in not too long. Because that seems to be kind of kind of a thing where, you know, you release a hero as a, um, uh, what's it called? As a team-up hero. And eventually, we may see them as as a full-fledged hero. Uh, or at least like a costume or something. But either way, so you see, if we go up here, so see Captain Marvel. So this, so Captain Marvel was in-game originally Miss Marvel, but now she is Captain Marvel. Oh, that's cool. So they had like the official thing between the two heroes. See, that's awesome. You know, the official torch passing of the moniker of Miss Marvel. It's cool. That's really neat. But either way. <laughs> uh, of course you weren't, Rev. Rev is claiming that the last page of that particular comic where, where Miss Marvel, the original Miss Marvel became Captain Marvel and Kamala Khan became the new Miss Marvel. Apparently it was covered in onion juice because it made Rev cry. He wasn't actually crying. I don't believe it. I think that he was crying because that's kind of Rev's thing. He's very emotional. You know, it's not a bad thing. It's not something to be ashamed of. It's just Rev is emotional, okay? I mean, it's fine. It's totally fine. No, nothing against Rev or anyone else. It's okay to have feels, guys. It is okay to have feels. We need to realize this. I'm still mad at myself, though, because I made such a stupid mistake today. <laughs> I got... And that's, that's why I started late, and that's why it's... I mean, relatively speaking, this is going to be a short stream because I still need to stop at my regular time, but I had to start it er... Uh, late because I got on the wrong train <laughs> and like I went all the way to the end of the line on the train and I was like ah oh, crap because <laughs> then I realized I went the wrong way and so I had to go all the way back on the train it was just it was so annoying I felt so stupid I didn't even catch any cool Pokemon god I was so mad I almost caught some there were like three Bulbasaur's and I missed them. One of them I tried to catch, but it ran away. I was so mad. Can't catch Pokemon on a train. Rev, you know how up-to-date I am with the comics. You know exactly how up-to-date I am. The answer is not at all in the slightest. Aunt May's... Ah, see, I was so excited because I thought it was something else. Aunt May's is, Kane is still pretty good. See, Rev is always telling me to read a bunch of comics, and I'm just like, dude, seriously? Like, I have to go in science. I can't be sitting around reading comic books. God! Are there comic books on tape? Because that would be awesome. Like, seriously, I have a really long commute that's super boring, and I could use something cool to listen to. Oh, excuse me. Although I have heard really good things about uh, about the new Miss Marvel, about Comic Con, I really have. I've heard that she is very, very awesome. Not just from Rev. Technically, yes. What? What does that mean, Rev? What are you trying to tell me? Comic Storian. Oh, okay. So it's not like official Marvel published ones. Gotcha. That's still pretty cool, though. Because really, it would be nice. Look at 
look at me busting out uniques. Two in a row with the boss wave. Well, I guess that wasn't a boss wave. But who cares? Stop judging and, you know, stop squandering my happiness. Ooh, yeah, I'll take that one instead. Remember, I don't even know what the Quake one was. Whoa, whoa, calm down, guys. Calm down with the particle effects, okay? There's not enough GPU for everybody. Just calm down. Just breathe. Oh, speaking of which, did you guys hear about the, uh, the class action lawsuit against NVIDIA? Oh, it's hilarious. If you haven't heard about it, it's, it's really funny. So basically, the 970 GTX, if I'm not mistaken, was um, basically, I mean, it's like borderline false advertising. So they were advertising it as having uh, four gigs of onboard um, VRAM, which technically it does. But the problem is that it was split into two pieces. So there was one piece that was three and a half, and then one piece that was th that was one half. So people were arguing that they weren't getting the performance that they were entitled to with it. So basically anybody who bought one gets $30 as a refund because, the, because NVIDIA is settling it. It's hilarious. And so I'm excited because I get a refund. Because that's the card that I have. I have the 9700. I'm pretty sure it was the 9700 GTX. Either way, it's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. But either way. I'm excited. Incidentally, I had a fun time with my mom. Thank you no one for asking. God. Oh, she came to visit. It was fun. We did cool stuff. And sadly, that's why I wasn't here Saturday for my Saturday stream. Otherwise, it totally would have been. Waka waka. What is this? Oh, cool! And single issues into digestible bites, and then we read it dramatically back <laughs> to you. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respected companies. Kamala Khan had a normal life. Cool. She had friends, and she had a loving religious Pakistani family, and she even had a fanfic about the Avengers, like most teenage girls in a world with Marvel would have. And like most sixteen-year-old girls, there's a party Shh. down the street that she needs to go to. Well, her parents, of course, don't want their daughter down at an unsupervised party at the waterfront. And after she argues with them up and down, yes, you did like my tweet, Rev. Thank you. That was very kind of you. A ditch a party because her parents told her to. Not Kamala. She's gonna go down to the party even if she has to sneak off, which she definitely does. And she ends up at her first real party with music, boys, and friends. What? She runs into the popular kids group where she's offered some orange juice to drink with vodka. Her friend uh oh and he pulls her away from all of the alcohol and she can't get over how embarrassing that was. I mean, she just wanted to go to a party and hang out with the cool kids. And now her friend Bruno is trying to protect her and all like he's her big brother or something. How dare he? So she storms off on the party and into the foggy night. Whoa. Wait, where did all this fog come from? Well, with everyone at the party being mystified by this fog, Kamala makes her way through the city, stumbling through the fog, until she begins to get a little dizzy and lightheaded. And then she falls into the middle mm -hmm. of the street. Man, that must have been some strong vodka. As she crawls <laughs> along the street trying to figure out what's going on, a beam of light hits her. And she ah! to see her favorite superheroes, Iron Man, Captain America, and Captain Marvel. What? In that new lame costume. No, she's in her old beautiful costume with long, sexy hair. Oh, and there's a porcupine waving at her with the peace sign. Okay, so Kamala <laughs> knows that this isn't real, as Iron Man tells her in air quotes, You're seeing what you need to see, Kamala. The Iron Man hallucination looks at her and tells her, You left your family's home, and you disobeyed your parents, and you're ignoring your own culture just so that your classmates will accept you. But she argues back with Captain America. I don't want to follow my family's rules. She explains that she grew up here, in Jersey Wait, City. Wait, wasn't she arguing with Iron Man? You just can't get out of the old ways. 
She shouldn't have to listen to her parents' rules and follow those guidelines. She should be allowed to live like an American teenager. And then she just sits down confused. She doesn't know what she's supposed to be or do. So the fake Captain Marvel asks her, what do you want to be? And she just looks up and says, awesome and butt-kicking and less complicated. I want to be you. Except I would be in that classic politically incorrect costume and kick button heels. Well, Captain Marvel looks down at her and says, you must have a fetish for heels. Now I want to tell you, <laughs> this isn't going to turn out like you're expecting. And with that, all three fake superheroes and the porcupine with a giant hand wave goodbye to her <laughs> as they fade out of existence. <laughs> the porcupine, what? She just stands there as the fog dissipates. She's all confused and everything gets dark around her. And then she punches her way out of a cocoon? She crawls out of the cocoon and hits the ground, and she realizes that she looks and sounds like classic Miss Marvel. Boy, this adventure's just beginning. Kamala feels so weird as Miss Marvel, and so out there, and so like she's gonna puke! And she retches forward, changing back into 16-year-old Kamala. Okay, that was weird, she thinks to herself. And then she's struck down with a massive amount of pain, and boom, she changes back into Miss Marvel. And then, she changes back into Kamala again. The worst part about changing into Miss Marvel is the shocking realization that superhero costumes don't come with underwear. Okay, Kamala <laughs> is like so she tries out a few <laughs> things and discovers that she can change at will and shrink down to the size of a beetle. But while she's playing around with her powers, the popular kids are over <laughs> at the docks mystified by that fog. And the school jock is getting just a little too handsy with one of the girls. And then he accidentally pushes Zoe into the water. Kamala witnesses all of this on the grass nearby and uh -oh. she says to herself, Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It's time for her to be a superhero. And it's time for Miss Marvel to save the day. So Kamala changes into the classic Miss Marvel once again, and she runs in to save Zoe. She makes her hand into a giant shovel, and she scoops up the entire pond, grabbing Zoe. Success! She saved her first civilian. But once all of the other civilians show up thanking Miss Marvel for the help, and asking her about that giant hand, Kamala runs for the bushes once again. At this point, she's confused as to why she was even granted all of these great powers, so Kamala grabs a bun's jacket and she runs home as fast as she can. And after all of that sneaking out of the house, she gets back just in time to avoid being... No, no, she definitely got grounded when she got home. <laughs> so she stands there as her parents tell her how disappointed they are in her and how she's so super grounded. And they explain that a part of being grounded is that she's now restricted to only home and only school. But she knows that this happened for a reason. She saved one life. She can save so many more. This is the moment she's been waiting for. To be the hero she's always dreamt of being. Just like Captain Marvel. The next day, Kamala wakes up with her hair in tangles. And in a panic, she realizes that her exploits as Miss Marvel have made the news. Okay, she thinks. I can't be the first person to wake up with superpowers. And I can't be the first person <laughs> to be all inhuman-like. So she spends the day trying to get a handle on her powers while looking up weird things like polymorphing, growing bigger and growing smaller. Eventually, she loses control as her body tenses up, and she accidentally shrinks down her hand, and then super grows her whole body. <laughs> she then accidentally changes into her mother. Very Freudian of her. It's a crazy and stressful day, so on the way home, she swings by her friend Bruno's shop to see how he's doing, and oh no, he's being robbed. Kamala quickly ducks behind the wall, and she realizes that her phone's dead. She can't call for help. But what is she worried about? She has superpowers now, she thinks to herself, and she quickly changes back into Miss Marvel and breaks the door down. Her new quick-thinking superhero brain makes a giant hand and she smashes the table and grabs the crook. The crook wow. looks at Bruno as he's being squeezed like crazy and he tells him, Dude, this has gone way too far. Make her stop squeezing me. As Kamala says to herself, this feels right. I can be a superhero. And just then, the crook's gun goes off and the bullet hits Kamala in the stomach. She uh -oh. lets go of the confused crook who can't believe that he even shot her and she falls to the ground. The world begins to black out around her eyes as Bruno tells the crook to get out of here. This has gone too far. The crook runs to the door and Bruno gets on the phone to call the police as quickly as he can. But Kamala reaches up for him and says, Stop! It's me, Kamala. Both Bruno and Kamala panic. And then Kamala realizes oh, I that she's changed back into her normal self and the bullet wound is all healed up. As Kamala begins to dig around the back of her pants trying to find where the bullet actually fell out of her body, Bruno puts it all together. It was Kamala who saved Zoe at the party. And just as Bruno is starting to accept that his friend is actually a superhero, the sirens of the police that Bruno called are getting closer. Oh my god, what is Kamala gonna do? So she quickly tries to- OMG! Marvel, but it looks like her healing ability needs her to stay as Kamala until she recovers from the gunshot. Easy fix, says Bruno, and he hands her a makeshift mask. And thus, the world is introduced to mini Miss Marvel. Once the police leave and it's just her and Bruno again, Kamala puts two and two together from Bruno's talks with the crook. That was your brother, wasn't it? She asks. And after a little coaxing, Bruno explains that his brother owes a lot of money to a local gang. 
and he was just trying to help him out. So Kamala decides she'll help him out. I mean, come on, she's a superhero now. So she whips up a costume from her traditional Berkey, and she heads off to the local gang hideout as Miss Marvel. Why is she sticking to the name Miss Marvel? Well, she figures that the name belongs to whoever has the courage to fight. And Kamala has more than enough courage to be a superhero. She walks into the basement where they're keeping Vic, Bruno's brother, and the first thing she encounters is a robot with a laser. She gives herself a little encouragement by telling herself that it's just like a boss in the world of Battlecraft. Don't fear it. Battlecraft. She doesn't fear it, and she enlarges her foot and crushes the robot. But that's only the beginning, as more robots pop up out of the woodwork, and Kamala quickly makes two giant hands and slaps them down like flies. Boy, being a superhero is easy as she nervously keeps moving through the building. But eventually, she makes her way to the room that Vic is being kept in. She did it. Except that the bad guys also arrive wearing shirts that say, I'm a bad guy. Boy, could they be any more obvious? <laughs> the bad guy tells Kamala that she's messing with the inventor's stuff, and then he opens fire on her. She embiggens. Oh yeah, that's what she calls her growing power, embiggening. So she embiggens her hand and gets <laughs> shot in the side. Well, that hurts, she thinks, as she realizes that she can't keep herself embiggened while healing. So she quickly shrinks down and crawls out of the hideout to go heal up. Well, she needs to come up with a better plan to save Vic, she thinks, as she crawls back to her home, where she gets caught by her parents again for being out late and uh -oh. being out while grounded. So while they yell at her and tell her that she's super, super, super grounded, she eats as much food as she can to help her healing accelerate. And then, the next day at school, since that's the only other place she can go, she starts her training montage as she pushes herself to the limits. <laughs> and the very next night, she's right back at the training montage. Basement. Really? She quickly destroys all of the robots by riding them and then smashing them, and then institutes her new plan. Grow big, grab Vic, and run! She grows some super long legs and takes some very large strides and runs out of there as fast as she can. She kind of did it. She rescued Vic. The next day, a doll that looks like Ms. Marvel is displayed in the Jersey City for everyone to see. But that doesn't matter. Kamala is riding high in that adrenaline. And she walks right into the doll in front of all of the other civilians and tells them, This doesn't matter. Nobody messes with Jersey City. And then she grows some more giant legs and walks away. Meanwhile, the villain is walking into the inventor's lair. And he informs him that this Miss Marvel has taken back their hostage. And the inventor tells him, You've made an urban legend, you idiot. And that legend ends now. Whoa. And that's the first Miss Marvel storyline. I had a lot of fun reading the story and writing up the script for you, as you can imagine, and she's definitely one of my new favorite superheroes. If you're wondering, she is in fact an Inhuman, and if you want to know what they are, go check out our Inhumans video, which should be on the screen right about now. If you like this video or learn something new, please give the video a like if you really do appreciate it. And if you want to chat with me, find me on Twitter, at ComicStorian. I'll see you guys next time, right here at ComicStorian. <laughs> that was super cool! See, Rev shared that. Rev posted the video with YouTube, or not YouTube, but um, what's it called, Moobot. That was really, really interesting. See, and now we all know. Now we all know. It's interesting, though. I mean, do, uh, do, do they explain why it is that she was chosen to, to be the one to bear the torch, so to speak? Because that's what I'm most curious about. And like the whole thing with like the mysterious fog and whatnot. No, like I'm just really curious about that. Just well, just like in the Flash, you know, you see the mysterious lightning bolt, and just like what is that? Who is that? And then you know, throughout the storyline, then you figure out what's going on, and it's really freaking cool. Terrigan mist. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't know anything about Inhumans. So apparently, this mist is a thing. I'll just. I'll, I'll just agree with Rev. Yes, obviously, that's what it is. So, is being an Inhuman something that you're born with, or is that something that you later acquire? So, and if it's something she's born with, does that mean she is a literal non-human? And if so, then who are her parents, and what is she? Crimson Cowl. Wah ha 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 ha. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Freaking Black Bolt ruining everything. Incidentally, Black Bolt is a hero that I'm looking forward to. Him and Beast are pretty much all that's left for me in terms of what, I, what I'm what i looking forward to in the third advance pack. Okay, it's genetic. Gotcha. 
So they're similar, but but different from mutants. They're similar enough to where you can talk about them at the same time, but so then what? Well, then what's what's the difference between a mutant? Let's see. Oh, okay, okay. So it's just the different means of activation. So it's like this mist is a crisper cast. And, you know, they've they've all got their specific guide sequences that are ready to be cut out. See, I understand. See, it's science. That's all it is. It's just basic science, right? Y'all know. Y'all know. Hey, look, I finished my thing. Go, Danny. Go, Danny. It's my birthday. Not really. Uh, 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 uh. Oops, wrong button. Actually, I guess I pushed both of them. Oh, the well, I remember. I remember that Miss Marvel got her power from the Kree. Or something along those lines. I, I know that Miss Marvel, or Captain Marvel, I apologize, is somehow related to the Kree. I don't remember exactly how, but I remember that she is. What was I going to do? I was going to do something. I was going to do the Omega thing. Uh... Wretch. Rev put up another new thing, so we're gonna listen to that. Shh, guys, we gotta listen. It's about inhumans. Welcome to the Know Your Universe series, where we explain the concepts and ideas of your favorite Shh. universe in a better explanation than we can give an origins or a complete story. We're about to delve into some of the inhumans, and it crossed my mind that we've never explained who or what the inhumans are. And since everyone's talking about them thanks to the movies and the TV shows, and the supposed rumor that Marvel is going to replace the X-Men with them, I think it's time that we explain exactly what the Inhumans are. The Inhumans, yes, as a please. group, first appeared in Fantastic Four, issue 45 in 1965. Though, there were some members that popped up earlier. Medusa showed up in an earlier Fantastic Four issue, namely number 36, and Gorgon showed up in Fantastic Four 44. Now, things of the Inhumans actually begin millions of years ago in the original Kree Scroll War. Uh -huh. The Kree established a station on the planet Uranus, which was the perfect position between their empires. And while it was on this site, they discovered life on a nearby planet known as Earth. After doing a little bit of research on these life forms, they found that this race had genetic potential because the Celestials had tinkered with their DNA for some unknown reason. Well, the Kree had also previously acquired the body of an Eternal named Arlok, and they took Arlok's DNA and they merged it into the DNA of the human beings. The purpose of this was to see what the evolutionary possibilities of a race that had already been tinkered with by the Celestials were. And really? it worked to use this as a race of superpowered individuals against the Skrulls. Well, as time went on, um. they abandoned the project because they discovered a prophecy that said that this project would be their downfall. <laughs> and they left these humans enhanced by the Eternals' DNA alone on the planet Earth. Now, I know we just discussed the Celestials and the Eternals, and I've never touched on them in this channel, but all you really need to know is that very early in Earth's timeline, the Kree tinkered with the DNA of humans and created the first Inhumans. Now, these first Inhumans went on to create their own society, and they decided to hide themselves from the rest of the human population. Using their superior intelligence, they built up their society and technologically surpassed the rest of the world. Eventually, they discovered the Terrigen Mist, and they discovered that when it was combined with their own DNA, it would grant powers and abilities. But sometimes, these powers and abilities would lead to deformities and genetic damage. Because of this, they opted to selectively breed within themselves to mitigate the many problematic deformities that could possibly arise. As the years moved on, they also learned how to pick up and move their city any time that it would be discovered. And this huh. way, it remained a mystery <laughs> for the rest of the world. That's awesome. They stayed this way until eventually the current royal family interacted with the rest of Earth's heroes. Groups such as Fantastic Four, the Avengers, and the X-Men. And they typically came out of hiding in order to fight against the world-ending threats such as Galactus, Ultron, and Apocalypse. 
At this time, the Inhumans were led by the royal family consisting of Black Bolt, Medusa, Karnak, Gorgon, Triton, Crystal, and Maximus the Mad, and their pet Lockjaw. The Inhuman society followed a very conformist belief that was based around the concept of your ability to decide who and what you are in their society. Oh, wow. Basically, once you were exposed to the Terrigen Mist and your abilities were revealed, the society would give you your role and your job. No matter how powerful you were, once this role was decided by the council, no Inhuman could break it. At this time, the Inhumans were strictly prohibited from having relationships outside of the Inhuman community for fear of ruining their own bloodline. Though, some certain members of the royal family ignored this, and we have examples of that when the Inhuman Crystal married the mutant Quicksilver. Eventually, this would lead to Ronan, the accuser, arriving and enslaving the Inhumans. <laughs> Their history with the Kree was then revealed to them, and it was discovered that they were made to look like the other alien races in the galaxy, so that they could blend in and go on espionage missions. Well, Ronan used the Inhumans to disrupt the many peace treaties that were being established in the galaxy, until eventually, Black Bolt, the current king of the Inhumans, challenged Ronan to combat. If Black Bolt won, the Inhumans would walk free. But if Ronan won, they would serve him without any more arguments. Black Bolt did in fact win their freedom, but the Inhuman society believed Black Bolt and the royal family to be failures in their roles, and as a result, they exiled the entire royal family out of the Inhuman city. The royal family then stayed in Latveria, but that didn't go very well because they dealt with, well, Latveria and bigotry. So they eventually returned, Multiple story arcs happen at this point, with the royal family getting more and more involved in the main Marvel 616, but the big event that everyone needs to be aware of for us to move forward with any of the Inhuman stuff is the storyline of Infinity. Oh. In the storyline, Thanos arrives on Earth looking for his son. Oh, dang. And he eventually goes to Black Bolt demanding answers, because they assume that Thanos' son is an Inhuman. The two begin a fight as Black Bolt won't tell Thanos, but eventually, Black Bolt uses the full extent of his power by telling Thanos a definitive no. Well, the simple act of Black Bolt saying no destroyed the Inhumans' floating city and everything inside. You see, Black Bolt's actual Inhuman power was the power of his voice, and a simple whisper could massively destroy everything around him. One of the key components that was inside of the Inhuman city was the Terrigen Bomb, a bomb that was created using the Terrigen Crystals and whose intent was to spread the mist as far as possible. Well, after Black Bolt spoke, the city which had already been evacuated and the bomb both fell to New York City and it awakened a whole new slew of Inhumans around the world that could possibly join the Inhuman family. We do find out later that this is exactly what Black Bolt intended. He wanted to basically revive the Inhuman race. This then leads to a new series of events titled Inhumanity, in which new Inhumans are waking up all over the world. And in this new batch of Inhumans, we're getting new superheroes, such as the new Miss Marvel. Basically, think of the Inhumans as a different kind of X-Men. Because that's exactly what it appears Marvel wants you to think, since they still own the rights to the Inhumans. <laughs> now, the Inhumans in general aren't just being used to create new characters in the Marvel comic line, they're also popping up in the shows and the movies. So the Inhumans are in fact getting a movie all about themselves. But they are uh -huh. also the current plot point in the current season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. One last thing I do want to explain... My chest is in here, you guys! An now, in order for this to work, the Inhuman gene needs to already be in the person on a cellular level. But if it is, the Terrigen Crystals are then exposed to water, and it creates the Terrigen Mist. These vapors are then pumped directly into the potential Inhuman, or they're just set off into the atmosphere so that anybody nearby can breathe it and turn into an Inhuman. Once these vapors are a part of the new Inhuman somehow, most Inhumans will then cocoon themselves. Ugh. The time the person spends in the cocoon is decided by a number of factors, but the longest it seems to have ever lasted was 13 days, and it's also been shown to be instantaneous. Once the person emerges from the cocoon, they now have their new abilities, and they're officially an inhuman. But sometimes, the cocoon can be triggered, but no powers are granted. And when this happens, it typically ends in death for the person. While it's not known how the terrogenesis process decides the individual's powers, it appears to respond to the needs, fears, and desires of the inhuman as an individual, or the nation as a whole. If you want to see a great example of the Terrigenesis process, check out the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2 Mid-Season Finale. And that's it. All the basic information you need to understand what the Inhumans are and how they function. We'll be going a lot more in depth into this as we get closer to more Inhuman events and movies, and we're also going to be slowly explaining more of the individual Inhumans, beginning with Miss Marvel. Hence why I wanted to explain this to you. I'm Benny for Comic Story, and like this video if you learned anything, and follow us on Twitter if you want to chat about this video or anything else on the channel. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time right here at Comic Story. Super cool, yo! See, that's some good stuff. 
That is some good information for people to know, right? See, I had no idea who the Inhumans were, and now I do. I just think it's so hilarious that that's, they're basically being done up since Marvel can still make movies about them. It's not surprising, but that, I, but they've been around for a long time, though. And that's what I find kind of crazy. Because you'd think that they would have been a slightly more recent development. I guess it's just because people weren't as familiar with Inhumans as they were the X-Men. And so that's why Marvel started with the X-Men and were like, Oh, hey, this is pretty cool. This is working. That is really neat. And I had no idea that Gorgon was a was an inhuman. Although I don't know what I thought he was <laughs> cuz I I didn't know he was an inhuman, but I also didn't really think about what else he could be. I guess I thought he was a mutant or something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that thing with Black Bolt setting off the bomb was really cool. Like, that's that's pretty awesome. And see, that's why I'm really excited to see Black Bolt in game. Because it seems like he's going to be pretty awesome. I'm really curious how they get his powers, uh, his powers into the game and how they do him justice, essentially. I have a feeling that it's going to be good, though. Although, to be fair, why, why is it that he waited so long during his battle to use his ability? Because if he can literally whisper and, like, blow up the entire planet, then why would you not always do that? And also, how does he control whether or not everything blows up? Because you'd think that he would need to, like, talk to people just normally, right? Because, like, Cyclops can't just open his eyes. If he does, then it's like... <sighs> so, is that, like, just really quiet? And, incidentally, the, uh, the inhuman royal family reminded me so much about the Russian royal family. <laughs> That's all I could think. I could just think about the, the parallels between the two. Oh, he can't speak without blowing everything up. Okay. So that makes a little more sense. But then, that makes even less sense for him to be the king, though. It's like, why would you have a king who can't talk to anybody? That seems like a terrible idea. <laughs> uh. Hey, look, I'm recreating Age of Ultron, sort of. Well, Hulk ran away, so... See, this is what I dislike about some of the uh, some of the ultimates. Body language and glances. Whoa! Well, Black Bolt. I'm just saying. <laughs> Text messages and emoji. <laughs> oh, please tell me that he actually sends a bunch of emoji in the comic books. Because that would be just about the most hilarious thing ever. No joke. That would just, that, oh my god, it's like seriously that would be the best thing ever. Well, Rev, you better start falling in, humans, because they're coming in the MCU. Come on, man. Jeez. Falling behind, bro. Although I'm not really one to say anything about it. Danny stretches. Get him.
Pew, 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 pew. I mean, in a way, like, I can, I can see... I, that's the problem, though, is that they're just like, oh, well, Marvel wants to essentially replace the X-Men with the Inhumans because it's similar. But the thing is, why does it matter that they're similar? You know, you've got lots of different races and teams and species and all this kind of thing that they could do the same thing from. But it's essentially boiling down to they're going to use the Inhumans because they're similar to mutants? You know what? Why not do one of the other teams that people aren't really aware of? Like, what about the Defenders? I would love to see some stuff with Moon Knight. That would be freaking awesome. Although then everybody would be like, oh, it's just Batman, but it's Marvel. Even so, like, I, w I would love to see some of, some of the other things that are there. Oh yeah, I'm hap I'm I'm glad to know it now. That was awesome. Thank you, thank you again for sharing it, Rev. It's very good to know. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I, I would assume that it it hasn't been like announced that they're saying we're replacing the X Men with the Inhumans. But, yeah, I mean, it, it can only be speculation because it doesn't... I mean, logically, I guess it's okay because they're trying to replace, like, a, an apple with an apple. But at the same time, it's going to be a huge uphill battle to get people to recognize these characters. Because th that's that they're, nobody will. That's just the way it is. It's not a bad thing. It's just how it is. I mean, it, it took it took a little while for people to get to know the X-Men, not the X- Well, yeah, I guess the X-Men, because we had the cartoon in the 90s. But if you weren't familiar with that, then it's just kind of like, what? And then, um, I mean, the Avengers, you know, uh, we've had Hulk stuff for freaking ever. Even Captain America had, well, they had the Avengers movies back in what, like the 60s or the 70s, somewhere around there? But then, um, like dang, what was the other thing? Because there was one that was just like really random. I mean, Doctor Strange even is pretty random. Kind of like, what? I'm an entertainment lawyer in Beverly Hills. I mean, I guess in a way that makes sense too, Rev. So Re Rev is just saying that the in the comics currently, the X-Men are sort of off doing their own thing and aren't even really involved in 616. For those who aren't aware, 616 is the designation of the, I guess, main Marvel Universe because there's multiple parallel universes. So the uh, the big main one is six one six. Oh no, I failed. What a shame. Seriously, like the the rewards for this are not good still, and that's kind of disappointing. Uh. All right, Colson, give me my shiznit. Thank you. He gave me my shiznit. What happened on Earth 1218? What what what's cool about that one, Rev? Rev is talking about cool Earths. I'm just like, what? Incidentally, one thing I'm really anxious to see is the update for the med kits, because it would be nice to just have something like this thing, 
where it's just a single item that you can use an unlimited number of time. Us? Oh, so it's like literally the boring no power world of boringness? That sucks. Boo Earth 1218. Boo! Incidentally, Rev, since you're here, who designates the dimensions? Like, who called Earth 616 Earth 616? Who, who, who is responsible for that? Like, is it Richards and, and Stark? Because they're the ones who probably discovered it? So see, again, I have no idea what the story is behind even how they were found. Oh my god, it's Jukacha! Hi, Jukacha. It's good to have you with us. Even though you're like super late and we're basically done. I mean, especially now that you're here, we're basically done. But I, I, I guess it's okay that you show up. I'm just saying, it would have been nice to know that you care earlier. But no, you know, whatever. I'm busy trying to find some ammo crates so that I can help society. You know, and on top of that, when you have parallel universes, how is it that the parallel universes all use the same designations? Because wouldn't it end up being like Futurama, where every universe wants to be Universe 1? I mean, it just, it makes sense, right? I'm not crazy. I mean, I know I'm crazy, but still. Rough justice... Uh... Uh, Rev is posting like a whole bunch of random stuff here. Uh. Okay, so apparently it started in the UK. But I I mean in the comics, how how do they deal with that? Yeah, or, or is it solely something that's like at the Marvel level where like in the comics they don't refer to Earth 616 as Earth 616 is that how it works I've been up for it's been about an hour now right about because I, I did start late I, I did do that Joker and I apologize oh the guy whoever writes it okay well, that's a lot less interesting than it could have been. I think it would have been way more fun if we had a bunch of parallel universes fighting over who gets to be Universe 1. How was the date? What date? I went on a date? Apparently, I went on a date, but I wasn't aware of it. Jerker Cha is informing me. That kind of sucks. Did I at least not have to pay? Because seeing as how I don't remember... Universe 1 is dead. <laughs> that sounds like one of those things that you would have with like a tinfoil hat and a cardboard sign. Oh, you mean, oh, last Wednesday? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, last Wednesday I didn't have a date. Last Thursday I did. Wednesday, I had to work on my videos. I had to work on my video stuff because my mom was coming into town, so I had to finish that up. I had, like, tentative plans that ended up getting canceled, though. That sucked. But the Thursday one went well. My bike got a flat tire because I ran over a piece of glass in the park because people are douchebags. Which is just so depressing. Yeah. <laughs> 
Earth 199,999 is the MCU. Right, is that actually true? Is that is that real? Because, you know, writing for Marvel Comics seems like it would be as cool as like discovering a new protein because you get to name it literally whatever you want. Like you, you don't have to name a protein related to like some other protein, even if it is like, you don't have to continue a naming scheme. Although like the official name might be, but you can literally name the protein, anything you want. That's why there is a protein called Ganondorf. There is also a protein called Sonic Hedgehog because awesome. I'm like, what the fudge? <laughs> you know, see, that's the thing is we have these giant numbers for the, what's it called? Um, for the universe designators. And the first thing it implies is that, you know, we have a lot. <laughs> There are a ton of universes, which is fine, but I just kind of feel sorry for the Marvel writers. I, I hope that they have like a big cheat sheet. Like these are all the universes that have been designated. If you're going to make a new one, don't use any of these because they already got something. I'm going to do universe 617. So it's literally a parallel universe. So then I wonder how Marvel Heroes would be defined because technically Marvel Heroes is supposed to be like a mass, uh, I guess, sort of hub of universes because we've got a whole bunch of different things. And that was the whole point of explaining away how it is that we play as the same hero and we're also fighting the people that we are also playing as. Is that we just have sort of this, like, train station of universes in this game. I don't know if Gaz or Marvel has actually spoken to the, the idea, but I think it would be funny to hear. Oh, excuse me. That's what I said. I, I do have to go at the usual time, so I got to leave in about 10 minutes or so, unfortunately. Oh, that's right. That's right. It is, it's explained in the story. Duh. I forgot. It's just been so long since I've played through and like really genuinely paid attention to the story. I forgot that. True, true, true. I love that as a robot, I can enter Odin Rage because it makes sense. Oh, it's only temporary. Gotcha. See, there's so many rules, man. So many rules. So does that happen in the comics where you have like a writer literally makes a universe for like the span of a single comic or I guess like maybe like a 10, a 10 comic arc or something like that? I'm just curious, because I don't know. Because clearly Marvel Heroes has been around for longer than that has, although the, the story itself, the actual, uh, the actual arc that's going on, I guess would be what? I guess like a single book for every chapter, so like 11 books at this point. Okay. I mean, you know, it's kind of like D&D &D in that sense. Like if I'm if I'm writing up a campaign for uh, for a D&D &D group, then you know, I'm going to take a combination of like the established Watsi canon and then just throw in a bunch of crap that I make up. 
because it just makes sense to me. And, you know, the first thing I'll say is I'll tell the players, like, these are the rules. You know, whether it's, like, magic users are, um, you know, like, discriminated against or whatever it happens to be. I mean, it's, it's nice that the writers have that kind of freedom. It's good. But, again, I just, I am just so unfamiliar with the comic canon in general that I... I can't speak intelligently at all about it, unfortunately. I wish I could, but I can't. Nice! New D&D &D setting, sweet. Well, yeah, it's, I, well, Gen Con is today, isn't it? Or, no, I guess it's tomorrow that it starts. Tomorrow or, or Wednesday it starts. I'm really sad I can't go. I, I so wanted to go to Gen Con, but I... I can't even afford the advance pack for Marvel Heroes, much less afford to go to Indianapolis. Well, yeah, I, I remember that the, uh, what's it called? Uh, Zendikar, is that what it is? Is a Magic the Gathering thing because there's board games for Zendikar. And so I'm familiar with it in that sense, and I get the emails from what's it called, uh, Cool Stuff Inc. all the time about Magic the Gathering, and I'm just like, ugh. Because I don't, I don't do magic. I, I stay away from that. I'm not a TCG person or a LCG person or whatever you want to call them. Okay, technically they're different things, CCGs versus LCGs. But either way, I, I am not about either one of them. How's that? <laughs> Excuse you, stop hitting me in the face. All right, let me at least finish this. All right, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish up my current legendary quest, which is the demons and sorcerers one, and then I'm actually going to get going. I still have to eat, and I am exhausted, because I had to wake up at about 4 in the morning today so I could drive my mom to the airport, uh, and then I was at work all day. So, and on top of that, I took the wrong train, <laughs> so I'm pretty tired. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm going to finish up this quest here uh, hopefully reasonably quick, and then I'm going to get going. Oh, that would be cool. Well, I mean, if it's like the Innistrad thing, then wouldn't that be similar to like the Call of Cthulhu system? I mean, obviously it's a, a completely different setting, a completely different game system than D&D. But even so, you could even do GURPS, and you could you could make a really nice horror thing. But, I mean, I guess having the background of Magic the Gathering is really cool. I mean, for, for people who are familiar with it, again, I'm not. Um, I, I am merely aware of its existence and what it is. But that's it. Oh, Raven, Ravenloft is even better. Dude, Ravenloft is freaking awesome. I remember in a couple of my D&D campaigns, I, I went into Ravenloft both as a DM and as a player. It's so cool. It's so much fun. Although I haven't done the... Uh, is it the temple? Crap, what is it? The, that, the really famous thing... I, I think it's in Ravenloft. Dang it, now I can't remember what it is. It was built by Aserac. Shoot! Why can't I remember this stupid... I don't know. It's going to come to me at like the most random time. But either way, I have not done that. It's like this, this famous setting that I don't remember off the top of my head. Oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. That sounds really neat. All right, well, since I finished that other quest real quick, I'll go ahead and do this one, too. Because we saw a lot of Morloids and Lava Men. So I think we'll be able to finish this quite quickly. Plus, this is an awesome song, and I know that you guys want to hear it. Oh, the 
songs that you used to sing All your favorite TV shows have gone out the window You know what my problem remains? Is that I still try to put real world logic into like video game and like the board game logic stuff. It's just the worst thing I can possibly do. It's not smart. Not smart. Oh, that would be cool. I always like having the political intrigue stuff. Whenever I do D&D games, or any role-playing game, I always like having that sort of like give and take. So if you guys ever played The Witcher 3, um, you've got the, well, or any uh, video game RPG, to varying extents, you have the whole, you know, you make a decision and you change the, w the landscape of the world in some way. Uh, and again, to varying extents, but I really love seeing that in tabletop RPGs because you can get so into detail with it and it's so much fun. Sometimes you'll get the stupid players who are just like, I don't want any of those people to be king. I want to be king. And then you're just like, okay. <laughs> and, you know, maybe they'll make it. You never know. Nay. What? Why is Jukacha saying nay? Nay what? Nay nothing. We're almost done tonight and all you have to say is nay? What the fudge, man? What the fudge? Not cool, sir. I just got an email. It's an important email, so I'm just going to take a look real quick. Okay. Ah, see, this is a good song, too. All right, so this, nah, this... This won't quite finish me off. Ah, there we go. We got some lava men. So we'll be able to finish off this quest. And then Danny's going to get going so that he can go and eat delicious food because he's really freaking hungry. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm so hungry. You guys, like, I can't even move. I, I can't even move. I'm so hungry, you guys. Ermagerd. Uh. All right, you guys. With that, thank you so very much for being here. I'm going to get going because awesomeness. I hope that you guys had fun. It's great to be back uh, uh, after my, my little break uh, with everything. So this week... Um, I won't be streaming on Thurs on Wednesday, but I might do a special stream on Thursday. Uh, probably do like Super Mario RPG because Super Mario RPG is awesome. Uh, and then on Saturday, I'll be back at my regular time. Um, so not nothing uh, is happening, nothing is planned. So unless something really crazy comes up, I will be here on Saturday. But with that. Thank you guys very, very much for being here. Take care. Have a wonderful week. I hope you guys had an awesome weekend. And uh, thanks as always for being here, you guys. Y'all are super cool.